The impulse response is one of several different ways of describing the behavior or characteristics of a system. Our objectives are to first define what we mean by an impulse as a signal, and then we'll introduce the idea of the impulse response of a system and look at some examples. So a discrete time impulse is denoted by the symbol delta of n. And this signal takes on the value 1 when n is equal to 0, and it takes on the value 0 everywhere else. The graph is 0 everywhere except for this value 1 at the origin. One of the reasons that impulses are so useful is because we can express any discrete time signal as a weighted sum of shifted impulses. So here's an example of that. I've got a signal which is 0 prior to n equals minus 1, and then it has values 2, 1 at n equals 0, 2 at 1, and minus 1 at n equal 2. I can write this signal as an impulse located at minus 1 of amplitude 2, and that would be 2 delta of n plus 1, plus an impulse at the origin of amplitude 1, so that's going to be 1 times delta of n plus a impulse at n equals 1 of amplitude 2 or 2 times delta of n minus 1 plus a value of minus 1 at n equals 2 or minus delta of n minus 2. So in this case, I've expressed this signal as a weighted sum of shifted impulses. The impulse response is the response of a system to an impulse. The way we obtain that, if I have a system with input x of n and that produces output y of n, in order to get the impulse response, I'm going to see what happens when I put an impulse into the input. So I'll set x of n equal delta of n, and then my output is the impulse response h of n. Now the impulse response, it turns out, completely describes an important class of systems. And what I mean by completely describes is that you can determine the output for such a system given only the input and the impulse response. So knowledge of the impulse response is sufficient to determine the output of the system. And this is closely tied in to the point we made on the previous slide of being able to express an arbitrary signal as a weighted combination of shifted impulses. The exact details of that will be in a later lecture. So suppose we're given a system with output y of n expressed in terms of the input x of n as x of n minus 2 x of n minus 1 plus x of n minus 2. And our goal is to find and graph the impulse response. Well, the way we obtain the impulse response is to see how the system responds to an impulse. So we're going to set the input equal to delta of n, an impulse, and then the impulse response is equal to the output. So replacing x of n with delta of n, we obtain the impulse response, h of n, as delta of n minus 2 delta of n minus 1 plus delta of n minus 2. The impulse delta of n is this term labeled delta of n and has unit amplitude at n equals 0. Then minus 2 delta of n minus 1 is this term at n equals 1 of amplitude minus 2. And then the term delta of n minus 2 has amplitude 1 and is located at time n equals 2. And everywhere else, we have zero. We've accounted for all the non-zero terms. Now, we say a system is finite impulse response, or has a finite impulse response, if the duration of the system's impulse response is finite. So suppose the impulse response was 1 whenever n was between 0 and 10, and it was 0 otherwise. So I've graphed that impulse response here and got 0 prior to n equals 0, then it's 1 up till n equals 10, and then it's 0 again. Well, this is a finite impulse response system, or FIR, because the impulse response duration is only through n equals 10. Thereafter, it's exactly 0. Now, in contrast, if h of n were equal to negative 1 raised to the nth power when n is greater than or equal to 0, and 0 when n is less than 0, 
Then I'd have the scenario that I've graphed down below, where h of n alternates between plus 1 and minus 1. It's minus 1 on the odd indices, and it's plus 1 on the even indices when n is greater than 0. And you can see that this impulse response never goes to 0. In fact, we'd call this an infinite impulse response system, or IIR system. Now, moving average is an important case of an FIR system. Recall that we can define a moving average having an output y of n as a sum from k equals 0 to m of bk times x of n minus k. Or writing out the sum, we have b0 times x of n plus b1 times x of n minus 1, and so on, up to b sub m times x of n minus m. We could find the impulse response of this system by putting an impulse as the input. So I'm going to replace x with delta, and that gives me the impulse response, h of n, as the sum of k equals 0 to m bk delta of n minus k. Or again, writing out the sum, we have b0 delta of n plus b1 delta of n minus 1, and so on, up to b sub m delta of n minus m. We can graph this using labels for the amplitudes, since we are allowing the b's to be general at this point. I'm going to have an amplitude of b0 at the origin when n is equal to 0, b1 when n is equal to 1, b2 when n is equal to 2, and so on, up to b sub m when n is equal to m. And outside of this interval, the impulse response is 0. So provided m is finite, this system has a finite impulse response. And the values of the impulse response are given by these moving average coefficients for n between 0 and m, and the impulse response is 0 otherwise. So the moving average system, it's very easy to convert from the coefficients to the impulse response. And similarly, one can go the other way. If you're given a finite duration impulse response, then you obtain a moving average representation for a system with that impulse response by setting the coefficients, the b's, to be equal to the non-zero values of the impulse response.